I want to start by thanking the Supreme Court for its unanimous decision today. It was a very important decision. We're very well crafted. And I think it will go a long way toward bringing our country together, which our country needs. You cannot take somebody out of a race. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly. But a court shouldn't be doing that, and the Supreme Court saw that very well. I think it's a very big day for America. I think it's a very big day for liberty, and I think it's uh, just a great day for this country. Donald Trump celebrating his unanimous 9 to nothing victory at the Supreme Court. Every single justice, even the liberal ones, ruling in favor of the former president and rejecting Colorado's attempt to keep him off the ballot. The decision following months of debate over whether Trump was in violation of the insurrectionist clause of the 14th Amendment, despite the former president never being charged with insurrection. And this is quite the reversal. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold led the charge to kick Trump off the ballot in her state, and now that it's failed... She says it's up to voters to save democracy. My larger reaction is disappointment. I do believe that states should be able, under our Constitution, to bar oath-breaking insurrectionists. Ultimately, it will be up to the American voters to save our democracy in November. Regardless of this decision, American democracy still remains very much under attack and at threat. And this upcoming election will be crucial for democracy's survival in the United States. The ruling impacting over 30 states that have considered challenges to remove Trump from the 2024 ballot. Before we get started, I'm supposed to inform all of you we're in this temporary studio for two days yeah. so that we can get ready for Super Tuesday coverage, which is going to be very super duper. And there you have it. So don't nobody don't freak out. <laughs> Everything is fine. The five is the same. Judge, uh, the Supreme Court <laughs> uh, justice from Colorado seems she ate no humble pie today. Yeah, she ain't no humble pie because she's a Trump hater, and that's what this is all about. When Look, when you get the United States Supreme Court to agree in a unanimous decision, 9-0, that it is inconceivable, and I think their wording is it's incongruous, for anyone to assume that someone who holds state office can literally throw someone or disqualify someone who's a candidate for federal office. You know, the whole thing, is, I mean, even if you read the text of the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, it's clear that it doesn't apply to the state. States. But this is just something that has happened as a result of the mainstream media and Nancy Pelosi's docudrama on insurrection, con convincing people that, yes, there was an insurrection and, yes, Donald Trump was an insurrectionist when he hasn't even been charged. He certainly hasn't been convicted. But, you know, a Colorado's highest court thought it should be able to bar him. And the Illinois, I think it was, she was a traffic court judge in Illinois. She thinks that she should have the power to decide a national federal election. I mean, these people are so obsessed and consumed with hatred toward Donald Trump. They don't care what the uh, Constitution says. It's, to them, it's simply about we've got to stop him at all costs. When they talk about threats to democracy, when they themselves are using language like we got to suppress the votes in their decision, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they are trying to prevent Americans from voting. This is a group that is so intimidated and so fearful that Donald Trump is so ahead of Joe Biden that that they're going to use every means they possibly can. And in the end, um, th this, is, this is a very interesting case, because the Supreme Court realized it was important to decide it today, even though the court wasn't meeting. At 10 a.m., they issued the decision. And the reason they did that was they didn't want anyone to vote in Super Tuesday and not think that their vote was going to matter. Right. And so, I mean, that is saving democracy, not this nonsense where these Democrats d assume that, Look, I will make sure that Colorado doesn't have him on the ballot. To what end? In the end, that means people in Colorado are essentially disenfranchised from voting in a federal election. It's all lunacy. It's all Trump hate. And the Supreme Court knocked it down. Jessica, does this help Democrats start to deal with reality so that they stop thinking that, oh, like the courts are going to stop him or the litigation is going to stop him or maybe he won't even be up the, on the ballot? and start to actually think, okay, we have to get serious about trying to figure out a way to make this election close. Well, I think that the Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, from Colorado was actually way further out, what do you say, over your skis? Um, than out the over her skis, out yes. over her skis <laughs> than the average Democrat, who, even if they thought that there was merit to the decision from the Colorado Supreme Court, still would have rathered he be on the ballot because of what that portends for the future. That there would definitely have been 
I don't want to say another January 6th, but a lot of people who would claim, well, we didn't even get a chance mm -hmm. to exercise our constitutional rights. So they could, two things could be true. We think this is the appropriate decision, but we would rather his name be there. And you heard that a lot, especially when the main decision was coming down, because that was unilateral. That didn't even go through a bench trial in the Supreme Court. That was just one woman deciding that, that he should come off. So I think that it, it was certainly a sobering weekend. We're going to talk about the slew of polls that came out in the next block and then this decision. But I wanted to just add a couple of things um, to the judge's analysis. So the insurrection clause doesn't say who decides the who's an insurrectionist. And the Supreme Court was unified in the 9-0 that he should stay on the Colorado ballot. But they're actually within that decision there were the five conservatives who said that Congress is who decides. And Jamie Raskin has already talked about the fact that they're reviving a bill mm -hmm. to have him barred because of being an insurrectionist. Which is but a then, huge waste of time. Yes. Potentially. I'm just saying that that's mm -hmm. the effect of that. So you had the five conservatives. That was the majority there. And then you had the four others. So the, the lady group in all of this. So the three liberal justices who rejected to, uh, sorry, rejected, objected to how broad the decision was in terms of what the conservatives said with Congress, saying that the Colorado case doesn't work, but that doesn't mean that Congress is the only body that should decide this. And then you had Amy Coney Barrett. Also a lady. All, well, she's in the lady caucus because she's mm -hmm. part of this. It's essentially five to four mm -hmm. who went against this. And she's saying, I don't agree with everything that the uh, liberal female justices said. Right. But... I want to make it known that I think it's too sweeping to say that Congress is the only deliberative body that can do okay. this. So, In fact, what she said was she doesn't like the fact that, that this is a, we've settled a politically charged issue in a volatile presidential season, and writing should turn down the national temperature, not no, no. up. And that's um, what the three liberal justices were doing. Jesse, when you take a shot at, at a politician and you fail, it usually makes that politician stronger. Did that happen here? These are the days, Dana, that I really enjoy doing the five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you look at your phone in the morning and you see nine zero, and then you just can't wait to sit next to Jessica. <laughs> and I'm here, and we're now here. We're sitting next to Jessica, and we can all just bask in the glory of the Supreme Court's decision. <laughs> Unanimous. I believe it was nine yeah, nothing. You can just... get into the weeds and talk about the Lady Caucus. I'd rather just look at nine nothing. I'm shocked. So many people on television, and I would never do this, gave the country mm -hmm. false hope. And these people went to law school. I proudly did not go to law school. But even I could read the 14th Amendment, and it was clear to even me, just a bachelor's <laughs> degree from Trinity College, a safety school, that this was not <laughs> going to go the way the Democrats thought it was going to go. Yet, these people, they call them judicial pundits, at the networks and on cable came out strongly saying that this case had a shot. <laughs> and now the same people, we'll do this tonight at 8 o'clock, the same people are saying, yes, we always knew that it was going to be a unanimous decision. They're lying to you. Everyone's been lying to you from the Bragg case to Jack Smith to Fannie. They're all getting everyone's hopes up. And they're now all of a sudden having to grapple with the fact, this is a direct quote, we're going to have to win this at the ballot box. They're all admitting this was the strategy. Mm -hmm. They're admitting they have nothing except lawyers and judges. They just wanted to persuade a few judges, not the American people. Because if you look at the polls, the American people have not been persuaded. And it doesn't look like they will be persuaded at this point. You're right, Dana. Mm. Every time he's indicted, he's stronger. <laughs> Every time he beats these silly raps, he's stronger. And you can see the Georgia case. You could see this Jack Smith decision. Even the Bragg case. Yep. Every single time, they've created a monster. And they're overriding hate for this man. I mean, it has gotten yep. weird, these people. I mean, he, he had a nice four years. <laughs> he had a nice four years. No, no one was thrown in Bob. prison. We didn't have any wars. The economy was hot. Stock market was hot. There weren't problems like we're dealing with now. Just get over it. Get um, over it, Jessica. Greg, one thing that I noticed, and obviously talk, the floor will be yours, but I did notice that there were all these tax against, attacks against Clarence Thomas today mm -hmm. when it was a 9-0 decision. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, they just wanted to attack Clarence Thomas. Why? Because he's black. Uh, mm. you know, his uh, wife. What? Because his wife participated in January 6th. But he, was about. he voted along with I, the, it's 9 0. I understand. It doesn't make any sense. His wife was Look, on I January agree. 6th. Jessica, she helped organize Jessica, buses. I agree. 
I agree. We need to do something about this extreme MAGA Supreme Court. I mean, I'm serious. Nine zero. Yeah. I mean, I heard I, this is a rumor that Sotomayor and uh, Justice Kagan were out in the parking lot listening to Toby Keith twirling their red hats out in front of their pickup truck. I think we this is why we need to get more justices into the Supreme Court so we can balance this extreme <laughs> nine. Right. Isn't that what we should do? It is a bummer that it's up to the voters. You know, I mean. Elections seem so old fashioned when you can rely on liberal traffic judges, liberal prosecutors, and liberal DAs to circumvent uh, the, peop the will of the people. And lawfare is what the Democrats do instead of debating and campaigning. Imagine instead of the World Series, this is a sports analogy. Got it. Imagine instead of, you had the World Series, and instead of the team playing, the owners investigate the star players of each team, trying to get them out before the game is played. That's exactly what this is. And I, I, you could take this as a victory, 9-0, to zero, but this is part of a bigger strategy. They're going to employ lawfare of all kinds against politicians, voters, supporters of people. They're doing it already. Um, and they get love from the media. The reason why these judges are doing it is because it's incentivized. It incentivizes. You can go from obscurity in Colorado or obscurity in Illinois, uh, yep. and you get a nice warm Sorry. bath from the media who thinks you're a big anti-Trump hero until that stunt falls apart. I think the big play is to, the goal is to label Trump as a felon. And this, they will try to pretend that this is a moral mission, but it's not. It's, it's directed to them by polling. They saw a poll that voters would be less likely to vote for Trump if he was a felon. Mm -hmm. So they start there and then they work backwards. Mm -hmm. They don't give a damn whether he's guilty or he needs to pay. They want to impact an election, circumvent the voter by using lawfare based on some desperate polling, which they need right now. Excellent points. Thank what you. a Day to come back to. Don't miss our Super Tuesday coverage. It's tomorrow. Starts at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.